we are talking about the big things. The big things, the stuff that matters. Right, because when it comes to money, there we can spend it a gazillion different ways. So yeah. what should we really be focused on yeah. uh, when it comes to our finances? And, and you even brought props. Oh, yeah, I brought props, mason jars. So okay. this mason jar represents the fixed amount of time and energy that you have. You just don't have an unlimited amount of time and energy. Mm -hmm. This jar includes the sand that represents all the stuff that you could be focused on when it comes to your personal finance, the bills, pizza lunch, I just yeah. wrote the check for the pizza lunch, driving across town to get a great price on Tide, like there's a lot to do. Now how are we going to fit the big things into this jar with that sand already in there? It's not going to fit, see they're mm -hmm. just not going to fit. This is a metaphor that comes from the seven habits of highly effective people and Good. I love it because it applies so well to finance. So let's forget about putting those rocks into a jar with sand in it already. Let's move that away uh -huh. and start with the things that really matter. Mm -hmm. And by the way, notice these, um, if Leanne were doing this segment, these would be polished rocks from a Zen garden. Yes, they would. Minor chunks of concrete from yes. the playground. Yes. Basically, yes. I went we to a construction site. I did, I did. Yep. So if we think about that, these are the big things, the things that really, really matter. Then after we've got the big things sorted out, we're gonna take all the little things, we're gonna make a big, huge mess because that's what we do on City Line, mm -hmm. and we're gonna put them in there, and then you see that we can not only fit the things that matter, but yeah. we can fit most, not all, but most of the other things. And it really depends on the order in which we tackle our personal finance. Okay, let's figure out what those big rocks are. Yeah. Um, what should the top priorities be? Number one may surprise people, yeah. job. Your okay. job. And I want people to be focused and engaged in their job. Uh -huh. Not because it's gonna make them happier in life, but it will, yeah. but because you want to do everything you can to minimize the financial risk of a layoff or a firing or a stress leave, mm -hmm. something like that. Now, anyone who's been laid off knows, <laughs> they're thinking, there is nothing I could have done here. My company shut down. So yeah. for many people, there really is nothing that can be done. But for a lot of people, the amount that you put into your job affects your security and the income that you receive, especially if you run your own business, right? Mm -hmm. So job is one of the things that we don't talk a lot about when it comes to personal That's finance, true. but it's your revenue. That's yeah. what the the money's coming in. It includes questions like, how does a couple figure out whether or not someone should go back to work after a baby? It includes the question of whether or not someone should quit their job and change careers. I'm a huge advocate of those things. I quit my job and changed careers myself, and yeah. I know lots of people who chose to take time off while they were raising their kids. Awesome. Uh -huh. You just want to think about that because that's a big rock. That's okay. a big rock. So we, we do talk about jobs a lot. We don't talk about being good at your job so yeah. that you are held on. And I think that's a very important yeah. point. And you know, if you're if you're in the place that you need to be. Uh, let's talk about debt. Whoa. We all got it. Oh yeah. And for many Canadians, the number one expense for them every single month is their mortgage. The house. So instead of driving across town to get a cheaper bottle of Tide, yeah. think about how can I do more on my mortgage mm -hmm. and also on credit card debt. You and I have talked mm -hmm. about this many times before. If you have one dollar outstanding on your credit card, there's a big rock for you. You yes. need to focus on how you can eliminate that. And absolutely, there are trade-offs. There's always trade-offs, mm -hmm. but that's a big rock. Managing your debt load is enormously important and so closely tied to your financial well-being. Well, money is so cheap and interest rates so low. Should you be fo you should still be focused on nailing that mortgage? Yeah, because let's talk about, so the mortgage versus credit card. Absolutely, yeah. the uh, mortgage rates are super, super low. Mm -hmm. And you can make the case to save for retirement instead of paying down your mortgage aggressively. Yeah. I mostly want to make sure you're making the payment on the mortgage. Oh, I see. And okay. that you're including that big rock before you buy a house. Because a lot of people these days will say, listen, it's just what it takes to live in the city that I live in. I have to, there's just nothing I can buy for a million dollars. Yeah. Yeah, but you could rent. You could live in the you suburbs. Could. You could make some choices. And I'm not advocating any of those choices. I'm advocating the thinking so that yeah. you really think about it. Because buying a house is so emotional mm -hmm. and it's so connected to our identity and what we picture for our family, all that kind of stuff, but we need to bring heart and head together when it comes to that rock. Yeah, and it might not be the only way. I mean, with prices being what they are, yeah. particularly in places like Toronto and Vancouver, yeah. I heard the average house of a semi-detached now is now a million dollars. Yeah, it's That's ridiculous. That's an average. It's ridiculous. And That's in people who live in smaller in centers across this country, yeah. they may get into this real estate kind of euphoria because they think that the price appreciation in Toronto and Vancouver applies to them. Right. And in smaller centers, 
<laughs> the price appreciation is just not there. Anywhere. It's not going anywhere. Right. You live in a small town. Right. No one's buying your house. So it's a very regional story, but I want people to be thinking about it. Let's talk about the future now because we, you yeah. know, we hear about retirement, this thing that's we going to happen it. at some point, and yeah. we're supposed to be saving for it now. Where is that? Is that one of our big rocks? It's one of our big rocks. Debt management, job, and retirement savings. Okay. And, you know, you, I have a kid. Mm -hmm. I know what it's like to try and balance the uh, orange shirt day, white shirt day, pizza lunch <laughs> activities, like all this kind of stuff. But you have to have one foot firmly planted in the future because right. retirement is, for most of us, a phase that is going to last longer than our parents. Yeah. Because we may work longer, but medical advances being what they are, we well could live into our 90s, maybe even past that. Mm -hmm. And so you need to be thinking about that. And what does that leave you with? Uh, you know, a few shekels to, to, to spend on fun stuff, but you got to be thinking about it. Right. Yeah, it actually can be terrifying when you really start thinking yeah, about it. If it you want to leave your life. But let's not be terrifying. We can just do some jazz hands and yeah, some time stuff. Yeah, it's going to be fun. Yeah, tell right? some knock knock jokes. What about the fun stuff? Yeah. Is there fun stuff we need to be putting away money for? Well, here's the thing. For everybody, it's a paradox. So yeah. a paradox is two statements that are both true, but mm -hmm. not necessarily at the same time. So on the one hand, you're only on this planet for a short period of time. You need yeah. to go out there and have a life. Go get some shoes. And on the other hand, you've yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah, of course. <laughs> On the other hand, everyone has just limited disposable income. Yeah. Even Mark Zuckerberg of mm. Facebook has limited. Now, his limit is like, oh, I can only spend four billion this year. <laughs> oh my God. But it's limited. Yeah. So let's resolve that. And here, here are two quotes: Happiness is not about having what you want. Yeah. It's about wanting what you have. So that's mm. one part of the paradox. Here's the other part: Whoever said that money can't buy happiness? simply didn't know where to shop. Ha. We just did a whole hour on happiness, so that's a very yeah. interesting quote. I love yeah. that. That was uh, yesterday's show. Anyways, good tips, Bruce. Let's go to break. More coming up.